Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Wrath of the Righteous with me, Bragatan. Let's keep exploring. Next stop, the Ravage Campsite. Collapsed tents, the ragged remains of sleeping bags, and abandoned backpacks rot around a long dead fire pit with an overturned cooking pot. Procure some reagents for creating consumable items here. We'll go back this way. This will be quick! Alright, so I would rather my animal companion take that straight damage because if again if he dies, he just comes back after a rest. Don't hold back! I'm gone. So not resting is really dangerous in the early game because that minus two penalty to strength and dexterity and minus six if you're exhausted is a really nasty penalty. A unit of mercenary serving Horgus Squirm has reached the troops with a chest full of gold coins and a message from Sir Horgus to score more victories. I right, got us some shield bearers. They're an extremely tanky unit but they do next to no damage. And you really want damage in the Crusade mode. After pacifying the elementals, the soldiers found the remains of a cultist sorcerer in the middle of a broken summoning circle. Despite his apparently outstanding magical power, he was unable to control the raging spirits he had brought into existence. His stiff fingers were still clenching the horrendous flail he used as a weapon. We got Tyranny of Mind. This plus two heavy flail can be safely wooded only by non-good characters, which we have a plenty in our party. But each time the wielder of this weapon lands a hit with it. The enemy has to pass a will saving throw DC 13, or become affected with the equivalent of the dominate person spell effect for one round. A good character wields this weapon, they become permanently confused even after they unequip it. This effect can be removed by remove curse spell DC 15. Alright, conundrum unsolved. Ancient ruins of Sarkoris inherited from the unknown builders of the Earthfall times. The Sarkorians dubbed this place the Conundrum Unsolved. Scattered all over the walls of the ruins are numerous pressure plates, buttons, and levers, the purpose of which one can only guess. I'll rest up before we answer there. We don't need to. You're not bad at spellcasting. Where did you study? Here and there. But I give up all my lessons just to be able to drink the way you do and not end up under the table. That uh, tooltip on the loading screen was the one that I gave last time. About how healing spells work in the Crusade battles. We do it my way. So we don't have to worry about buffing up here. All these areas tied to this quest don't have any enemies. So you're safe to explore.
follow if you dare. All right, got ourselves some uh, slabs. So the lone symbol on the stone slab looks worn out. The edges of the slab are rough, as if unfinished. And yet, the slab clearly has some kind of practical use. So you come across a lot of these puzzles as you play through the game. A stone slab with strange symbols, there's no magic in them, and yet they are definitely unique. Their purpose is a mystery. Just like you and me. I'm off! But this is the easiest of the puzzles, they get bigger and more complex as you go. <sighs> Don't mind me. So first you want to place the ones on the outside because those are freebies. And typically tell you the pattern in the middle. So we have what I call the Scythe, Spiky Ghost, Scythe, and Spiky Seven. Or Wing Seven is what I usually call it. Oh, not you, Sunshine. Something wrong. So over here we want a spiky ghost. So the way this works, imagine that this divider between these two symbols is this middle part. So we want to find one with a spiky ghost on it, probably this one. And have that line up here. Now this side is going to have a scythe and a scythe. And a spiky seven goes here. So this one here. So the scythes line up, this one lines up with this side here, and lines up with the skip here. I guess you could also imagine this middle tile does not exist at all, and they're just adjacent to each other. And now you want the same symbol to be adjacent to one another. So we're going to have a wing 7 here and a spiky ghost here. Like so. Fine. And we only have one option left. Voila. It was easy, wasn't it? Simple puzzle, simple solution. But it was just the beginning. Its purpose was to awaken curiosity. A translucent figure appears out of thin air, clad in a loose-fitting robe. Its face is hidden behind a simple, unadorned mask. I think Nenio has dialogue here as well. Our mortals are not meant to unveil the secret to the universe and grasp the meaning of creation. But is this really so? The secrets of the universe will only be revealed to the most worthy of mortals. Prove yourself. Be the first for whom all the secrets of the world are revealed. The heart of mystery is located west of here. Solve the puzzle, and you'll comprehend the forbidden knowledge. A map of an area that looks vaguely like the world wound appears in the figure's hands. A single dot shines brightly on the map. Who are you? The translucent figure remains silent. But what is the heart of mystery? Simple puzzle, simple solution. The heart of mystery is located west of here. Hey, can you hear me? Comprehend the meaning of creation for the most worthy of mortals, the heart of mystery prove all the secrets of the world. The translucent figure vanishes into thin air. And each one of these areas, when you solve the puzzle, opens up a door. I do what I must. Like so. We got another elven note for old storyteller. I'm pretty sure every puzzle gives you an elven note for the storyteller. So if you want to do his quest to completion, you need to grab all of those. I think it might be tied to the secret ending, though you can circumvent it if you pass the skill checks. Don't quote me on that. The secret ending is pretty convoluted in this game. At least compared to Kingmaker. So whenever the camp moves forward and you go there for the first time, an event will trigger. So this first time we'll have a... Is that a Hell Knight yet? I guess an Armager, Yaker, come talk to you. Uh, the second time... 
I think it's up here. Um, is when things actually change in your party. So you might want to hold off doing that until you've cleared out everything else first. Alright, Moon Dance Meadow. Here are the druids of Ulzar Chorus, practitioners of the Green Faith. Used to perform their sacred right nighttime rites, dancing in the silver moonlight and offering up prayers to Mother Nature. Their bones can still be found in the stick sickly soil of the desecrated meadow, where for many decades one could only hear grunting, dying screams, and the cracking of torn flesh in place of music and laughter. We don't need to rest up here. We'll just use a mercy to get rid of Lance fatigue. I think this is the Smilodon fight. No reason to pause. I forgot if she has the fatigue. She does. Perfect. I will help where I can. We should move. I will lend you my aid. I keep forgetting to use. Oh no, I didn't use that. Look at me go. Yeah. Meditate on your mistakes. I think you feel better. Follow if you dare. Cover me, all right? Uh oh. Be gone, fiend! I'm off. So Smilodons are a really nasty enemy. I don't know if the enemy versions got nerfed, but the animal companion version did. The so Smilodon used to be one of the best animal companions because they started with five attacks, one bite attack and four claw attacks. I do what they changed I must. it, so now it's one bite attack and two claw attacks, but then at level 7 they get two more rake attacks, which are melee attacks that inflict bleeding. So at level 7 they get their five attacks, but no longer at level 1. I wasn't paying attention if they did five attacks here or not. I'm gone. Yeah, the Smilodon was, I think, the best offensive companion. The Leopard was one of the best um, tanky companions. They get an absurd amount of armor class. Uh, the Dog and Wolf can trip on their attacks. Pretty great. Follow if you dare. And those are the uh, top tier animal companions. We can change that name later. But for now, that will suffice. So I sometimes make the mistake of going to camp to try and sell stuff. I mean, this event doesn't change anything. 
But it does interrupt what I go there for. And then I carry two full barrels of mead out of the fire on these two shoulders. Too bad I wasn't there. We could have made it four barrels. The 18 straight, the 19. He gets plus two, so he only has 17. We gave her plus one. I guess they both had 17. I'm pretty sure she only started with 17. We gave her one, right? Or did I give her one charisma? I don't remember. Alright, Chili Creek. A sleepy fishing village outside the world wound. A quiet place on the bank of a lazy river where nothing interesting seems to have happened since its founding day. Yeah. And that's where our army has to stop for now. And it's one of the nastiest areas in Act 2. Leper's Smile. But we'll deal with that later. Oh, need to recruit more soldiers. Real quick. I don't think that changes the encounter there. I hope it doesn't. Alright. I'm not sure why clerics start as a mercenary unit. I feel like that'd be an essential part of a crusader army, but it, that's fine. But you see, they still spawn down here in Canabras, so we have to march them all the way up to Setsuna. We'll actually send Setsuna back down to grab them. Oh, whoops. Did that backwards. There we go. All right, back to Chili Creek. Um, we should probably go ahead and buff I up. I am never wrong. Unimosi travisi. Unimosi travisi. A bright future awaits us. The goddess protects us. So if we go up here and hang a right, we can just skip right up to this part. We won't fall here. I fray. swear it. The light take you. Stab you or zap you. Why not both? Let me help. I don't think he's ever triggered from down there before. Adrenoff walks thoughtfully around the grove. He pauses in front of a few trees, lingering there for some time. He seems to be examining something carefully. At the sound of your footsteps, he turns around abruptly, but the anxious expression on his face quickly gives way to an amiable smile. Commander, it's so good to see you. It seems you found time to visit our quiet backwater after all. So Chili Creek and the Kalesa quest with the uh, Autumn Foreign Haze are both uh, backer quests, so fans made these quests. Uh, Chili Creek does not stand out nearly as much. It does stand out a bit, but not, not nearly as much as Kayla's quest. I could be mistaken, but it looked like you were frightened by my arrival. Oh no, you startled me. That's all. It's my overactive imagination. 
I still can't get used to living in such a small village. The town where I grew up was, such, was a good deal larger, and was located near a trade route, so there were always lots of new faces, and plenty of people bustling around. Here, though, it's different. The moment you step outside the village, you're all alone. You can walk for miles in any direction with only the birds and animals for company. This is, of course, the way Aristotle teaches us to live. But truth be told, this still makes me somewhat feel somewhat uncomfortable. Why were you looking at those trees? See for yourself. He points to one of the branches, and among the leaves you notice a small doll made of grass and seaweed, tied with blue ribbon. I keep finding them here in the grove. I think it's some kind of local ritual. I've asked the villagers to tell me what it means, but they won't give me an answer. I just don't understand the reason for all this secrecy. How do you like living in the village? I'm getting used to the way of things. I still get the occasional sidelong glance from the locals, but that's not surprising. After all, I'm just some stranger who decided to show up without an invitation and settle down in the village. But the church warned us about this. Such caution is to be expected at first. I just have to do my best to earn their trust. I heal, I purify water, I give blessings. Sooner or later, they'll accept me as one of their own. It's so quiet here. What makes you forget what peace feels like? I understand. My time at Canabras gave me a small taste of war. I only had to live through it for a few days, but I know the horrors I witnessed will haunt my nightmares for years to come. I cannot imagine how hard it is for those like yourself, soldiers who have given their lives to this cause. The priest places a hand on his heart. You've chosen to fight there in order to protect our peaceful and quiet life here, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart. What do the locals think of Aristotle? They're indifferent. They are pragmatic people, you know. They don't have time for theology. If Old Dead Eye helps them survive, that's good enough for them. You know, some priests get overzealous with sermons. They demand that people pray, observe all the rituals, make sacrifices. And then those priests, all holy and pious, are surprised when locals kick them out of the village, right to the nearest ditch. The priest laughs. I was taught differently. First, you have to prove your worth. You have to show them why you and your deity are useful. It's only after they've begun to trust you and start asking questions about your faith that you can really share your beliefs. Then you can tell them all about Old Dead Eye and his teachings. Oh well then, will you show me around the village? Of course, let's go. You'll get to meet the locals, see how we live. Maybe you'll even manage to get some peace and quiet. A temporary respite from the hardships of war. Yeah, maybe. So he'll actually come join us and help us fight up here. Can we retreat already? You've crossed the wrong mongrel. I do what I must. Fall. The inheritor. The Glossaris. Right? Distract them from me. So you actually return to this area, I think, two more times throughout the we course of the game. The they are the darkness. Strike! They better stop running. I will bring down the divine wrath. And each time you come back, there'll be more enemies up there. It repopulates with stronger and stronger enemies each time, so. Don't forget to check it out every time you come back to this location. We do it my way. You won't survive oh, me. Regret this. You should have run. Did you see that? This will hurt. I'm not sure why they keep dropping their egg. No mercy I've never seen that before. Wicked. Follow if you dare. A 
thought there was one more fight. Time to share your treasures. But I could be mistaken. My skills are absolute. Next, I think that's all the village right there. Or not yet. It's if we get too close to, to the village, we start another event, so I'm not going to do that yet. A small doll made of grass is tied to a tree with a dark blue ribbon. A straw doll clad in a small, skillfully embroidered light blue dress is tied to the trunk of the tree. I do what I must. Old faded blue ribbons hang from the branches of the tree. Don't hold back! Aha! Uh -huh. A crest of Your my performance abilities. is lacking. You are lacking. I'm gone. A piece of grey ribbon hangs from the branch. We do it my way. Alright, I'm actually going to call it here before we enter the village. Because we have a fair little bit to do once we get there. Well, by that, I mean a lot of talking. So, I'm going to call it here for now. Next time we'll enter the village and speak to the locals and help them deal with their first problem. And then go back to managing the crusade. But for now, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.